Hello to those who are participating in the Summer Religious Education Program here at St. Catharines. You are catechists and also your parents have asked you to submit some questions, so the priests are going to be answering some of those questions. I'm going to be answering some of the questions you had on the Mass, and most importantly, we had some questions on why do we have to go to Mass. We know that we do actually have an obligation to go to church every Sunday, and we go to church every Sunday because we want to hear the word of God proclaimed and also because we want to, from the altar, receive the most holy body and blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ that is present in the Eucharist. And so we do have an obligation to go to Mass on Sunday, and even though it's an obligation, we always want to be aware that it is a blessing to go to Mass. Because in Mass, we get to hear those, that word of God and we get to receive Holy Communion. So while there is an obligation, we always want to be aware of what a blessing it is to go to go to receive the Eucharist. And so it's always important to ask, well, why do we have to go to church on Sunday? That's always another question. Why can't we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever? And you certainly can go to Mass on those days. However, we do have the obligation to go on Sunday, unless there's an illness or something like that. And the pandemic was obviously the most recent case of that. And the reason we go to Mass on Sunday is because if you look in the creation accounts, we see that God created the world in seven days. And on all those, on the first six days of creation, what was God doing? He was actively creating something. And then we see that on the seventh day, what did God do? He rested. He didn't actually create anything on the seventh day. And even though scripture tells us that God rested on the seventh day, we're certainly aware that even though God rested, he didn't rest because he was tired. God was giving us the example that we should follow. So by him resting on the seventh day of creation, he was showing that that seventh day of creation was meant to be a day of rest for everyone. And so even when we get to the commandments, we have 10 commandments, the third commandments is keep holy the Sabbath day. For the Jewish people in the Old Testament, that was Saturday. When we get to the New Testament, the new covenant, we know that Sunday becomes the new Sabbath because it was on Sunday that Jesus rose victoriously over sin and death and to commemorate his resurrection, we celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday. You'll also notice every time you go to Mass, the priest wears different colors and vestments that we wear. And so, during this season that we're currently in, which is called Ordinary Time, and even though it's called Ordinary Time, it doesn't mean it's just ordinary. It means that it's not like the privileged seasons of Lent, Advent, Christmas, Easter, that we're kind of stepping outside of those privileged seasons and in ordinary time, we always wear green. And we wear green because in ordinary time, we're focusing on the public life of Jesus. That time after he left his home and that time before he actually suffered, died, and rose. When he was performing his public ministry, which was teaching, which was preaching, which was performing miracles. So ordinary time, we're wearing green to symbolize the public ministry of Jesus. As we get to Lent and Advent, you'll see the priest and also the deacons, they'll wear violet vestments. And the violet, it looks like purple, the violet vestments are meant to be a sign that we're sacrificing, that we're preparing for what's coming after those seasons. And so we're making sacrifice, we're making penance, and we're getting ready in anticipation for the seasons that are about to come. And so we wear this penitential color of violet during those seasons. If you notice, on the third Sunday of Lent and also the third Sunday of Advent, the priest or deacon will sometimes wear a rose color vestment, which looks like pink. It's a rose color vestment because during those Sundays, we're actually meant to be rejoicing. We're rejoicing that we're halfway between from when we started that liturgical season of Lent or Advent, and we're anticipating coming to the conclusion of Lent and Advent so that we can celebrate Christmas and Easter. So when it comes time for Christmas and Easter, so often you'll, well, the priest or deacon will always be wearing white because white is a sign of purity and white is also a sign of rejoicing. And so that's some of the reasons why we wear those colors. We had a lot of questions on some of the things we do as Catholics. We stand during mass, we sit during mass, we kneel during mass, we genuflect when we walk into the Catholic church and when we leave the Catholic church. So why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we doing those things? It's important to know anytime we walk into a Catholic church and every time we leave a Catholic church, we genuflect towards the tabernacle. And I'll just show you what a genuflection looks like. Bring your right knee down to the ground. You make the sign of the cross. And again, you can't see the tabernacle. I'm genuflecting towards there because that's where the tabernacle is located, even though you can't see this on this video. And um, in our scriptures, we read 
um, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend. We believe that Jesus Christ is present in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And so when we genuflect, we're basically showing the reverence and respect that we have towards Jesus. We're getting in the most humbling position possible, kneeling, genuflecting, it's a sign of humility. And so we're humbly submitting ourselves to God. When we stand during Mass, you notice there at the beginning of Mass we stand, at the end of Mass we stand, during the Gospels we stand, and during the Creed we stand. Standing is always a sign of active, it's always a sign of being ready for action. And so as we're in those parts of Mass, we're basically saying we're actively ready to embrace what it is that we're called to embrace. And so the Gospel is, um, obviously, the four Gospels and the Scriptures. When we listen to those Gospels at Mass, we're standing actively ready to hear the words of Jesus so that we can live the words of Jesus in our life. And another posture we do during Mass is we also sit. You notice during the Liturgy of the Word, we have the Old Testament reading, we have the Responsorial Psalm, we have the New Testament reading. During that time, we're sitting. And sitting is always a posture of reflection. So we're kind of in a bit more of a relaxed position, and we're in that relaxed position so that without any hindrance, we can reflect on what is being proclaimed to us. And then finally, we get to the position of kneeling, which again, kneeling, similar to genuflection, is where we humbly submit ourselves before the majesty that is God, and in particular, the majesty that will be present on the altar when Jesus' own body, blood, soul, and divinity is present in the Eucharist. And so we have that act, you know, you don't typically kneel before others, so it's this act that is reserved almost exclusively for God. When we kneel, we're showing that reverence, that respect, that adoration, um, that glorious dignity um, that belongs to God. And so those are just some questions we wanted to ask about Mass. Why should we go to Mass? Well, because God rested on the seventh day and because the commandments tell us to. And Sunday is the new Sabbath because of the resurrection of Jesus. All these different liturgical colors that we use, they all symbolize something that's important. So as soon as you walk into church and you see the priest or deacon with those vestments, you can immediately tell which season we're in. And also, you know, when we come to Mass, we genuflect to show our reverence towards the Blessed Sacrament. We stand to show our active readiness to embrace those words uh, that are being those prayers and also the words of the gospel that are being spoken to us we sit to quietly reflect on the word of god being proclaimed and we kneel humbly to show that there is nothing greater on this earth than the power of god present in the eucharist in the body blood soul and divinity of jesus christ so those are just some of the questions that we could get to about the mass and in time we may be able to answer some more of these questions about the mass and I'll be back soon with another video on another topic that you want to hear about. So make sure you're learning during this time. Even though it's unique, you can't actually be physically present with one another. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be learning just as much as if you were physically present. So we look forward to hearing about all your experiences that you've had in this unique time of distance learning, even in our summer religious education program. God bless.